topic today is how you can avoid marginalizing yourself. Two big tips here. Number one, don't assume that our opponents or people who agree with us but have tactical differences are motivated by conscious evil or by some kind of evil far-reaching conspiracy. A couple weeks ago, a couple days ago, I was on a, a national TV talk show uh, debating Susan Glick from the Violence Policy Center, one of Josh Sugarman's group, on concealed carry. And she starts off by saying that, of course, all rational people understand we've got this problem in this country of too much guns, and the only reason that we don't have all the gun controls that she would like, including handgun prohibition, is that that evil National Rifle Association, which after all is just a surrogate for the gun companies, yeah. Boy, I wish the gun companies were as pro-gun as the anti-gun people think they are. <laughs> Which is just a... I, I, I credit Richard Feldman for moving them a, a, a long distance in that direction, but uh, they, they certainly haven't been that way historically. Um, that all these gun companies which run the NRA are only concerned about their profits from selling more and more guns, and they really don't care about how many people get killed in the process as long as they can you know, create more gun sales. And this concealed carry movement, which is sweeping the country, is only a tactic to increase the gun market since it's been otherwise stagnant. Um, I guess she missed 1993-1994. And all the people who are pushing concealed carry don't really care about crime because they never propose any other anti-crime uh, measures. It's easy to recognize that kind of delusional bigotry and willful blindness that lies behind such a statement when somebody's making it about you. The question is, can you recognize that same kind of self-delusion in yourself when you apply it to other people? It's true that the national media are generally wrong about guns, and they're generally shills for the anti-gun lobbies. But that doesn't mean that there is some kind of national media conspiracy in favor of gun control. The individual media folks are simply carrying out the prejudices and worldview of the kind of people that they are. Likewise, I think the United Nations is a pernicious institution, which has long ago abandoned its original noble goal of world freedom. But that doesn't mean that the gun control movement is part of some kind of United Nations conspiracy. When you abandon these ridiculous conspiracy theories and the theories that people who disagree with you are evil or otherwise communists or Nazis or, or Martians or something else, then you're, ba you're better able to understand what their true motives are, what, what they're really thinking about, and to respond to them. And when you do that, when you understand that the local spokesperson for the anti-gun group who you may be having a debate with is not actually Boutros Boutros Ghali's surrogate and in, in trying to enslave the entire world, then you'll be better able to address the concerns that this person is raising and respond to them. You probably won't be able to convert this particular spokesperson, but you'll be a much more effective spokesperson to all those undecided folks out there in the middle. Second, in your own mind and in public, don't, don't minimize the suffering of gun crime victims. Stephen Spisato is surely wrong when he says that he doesn't blame the man who murdered his wife. <laughs> Instead, he blames the people who made and sold the gun that the man used. And Sarah Brady is surely wrong to blame defenders of the Constitution for all the suffering that she and her husband have gone through. But these mistakes don't minimize or erase the genuine pain of raising your little daughter without a mother or of seeing the vivacious man you marry lose most of his body and a portion of his mind. If you deny other people's pain, then you're making the same mistake that too many gun control advocates make in disconnecting themselves from the experience of people who are different. The Branch Davidians believed in a false religion and they exercised very poor judgment in their choice of a prophet. But those errors don't reduce by one bit the suffering of the children who died as a result of the federal government's unjustifiable and criminal aggression. When Handgun Control Incorporated hires and pays for a spin control artist to help the White House manage the Waco hearings, to help the federal government get away with shooting innocent people with machine guns and other weapons, the Handgun Control Incorporated demonstrates that it just doesn't get it. If you really care about the victims of gun violence, you ought to care just as about much about the ones killed by government guns. As leaders of the gun rights movement, it's your responsibility not just to act responsibly and to understand your opponents properly, it's your duty to share these standards with the gun rights activists back home. Not only should you model good behavior, you should, in a tactful manner, put a swift end to bad behavior on the part of other gun rights activists. 
No matter how badly the anti-gunners sometimes behave, there is no excuse for sinking to their level. As Richard Nixon observed, those who hate you can't harm you unless you hate them back, and then you destroy yourself. Last year when we met in San Francisco, I told you the Second Amendment was in a moment of tremendous peril. I told you to get active in the fall elections because the coming election might be our last chance to save the Second Amendment. Well, you people sure came through. It's a lot more fun putting my energy, and I'm sure it is for you too, into enacting good concealed carry laws than in pulling off goal line defenses against new gun control laws. Don't let up your energy. Keep on working with pro-freedom groups like the National Rifle Association, like the Citizens Committee for the Right to Keep and Bear Arms, until we bring the full light of the Second Amendment and the rest of constitutional freedom all over the country, even to California, even to New Jersey, and let's go all the way and liberate Washington, D.C. <laughs> Finally, please remember in the words of my hero, the late Jerry Garcia, without love in your dream, it'll never come true. Thank you.